3 of DevCamp. My name is Andrea, and I will be guiding you through weeks 3 and 4 of DevCamp. I work with your previous instructor, Nate, in the Idea Labs. Last week, you started to learn about CSS and how you can use it to customize the appearance of your website. This week, we will take CSS a step further by organizing our sites with some more CSS magic. This is video 3.1 where we will go over how to start customizing your CSS with classes and IDs. We'll also talk about why this type of organization is important. Before we get started, go ahead and go to glitch.com, sign in with the account you've used before, open up the project with your name on it, and also go ahead and open up w3schools.com on a different tab. You may be wondering why on earth we need to organize our code. We already have a lot of code from the first two weeks, and guess what? We're only halfway through. So by keeping up with good organizational practices, we will be more easily able to manage and customize our site over time as we continue to add more code. In CSS, we can use classes and IDs to help us do this. What are classes and IDs? In CSS, classes and IDs both target specific elements on a page. However, a class name can be used by multiple HTML elements, while an ID name should only be used by one HTML element. To better understand classes and IDs, let's take a look at some examples in our code. I'm liking the way my website is looking so far, but I want to customize the first paragraph on my site about pangolins. I think I want to change the font weight of the text so it stands out more on my screen. Well, what could I do? If you suggested using a p tag, that's a great idea. But when I do this, it changes all of the p tags to look the same. I don't think that's what I'm going for. This is where I would need to target a specific element on the page using a class or an ID. But which should we use? Classes or IDs? As Pooh would say, what to do, what to do. Take a moment to think about it. And remember, we only want to modify one element on our site. You're right, we want to use an ID. Remember, we use IDs when we want to modify only one HTML element. Now take a moment to read the code on the screen. Does it look familiar? The element part should look familiar, but now there is more text after it. I've added an ID attribute after my element inside the first tag. By adding an ID to this element, all of this ID's properties will be applied to that element. In HTML, we add an ID to an element by writing the word ID followed by an equal sign. After the equal sign, we write the ID name inside of two quotation marks. When writing an ID name, your name should only be one word. Otherwise, the computer won't understand what you're trying to do. If you want to use two or more words, you can put them together using camel case notation. But what is camel case notation? <laughs> That's a great question. Camel case notation is when you write the first word in all lowercase, and then you capitalize the first letter of any following words. For example, I use camel case notation here with ID name. Why do you think it's called camel case notation? When written out, the two words smooshed together look like a camel's hump. Pretty cool, huh? Now let's add IDs to our elements in our HTML file. Because I want to target the first paragraph in my document, I'm only going to add an ID to the first paragraph. To more easily remember the purpose of this ID later, I recommend naming your ID something related to its purpose. For example, I'm naming mine paragraph one, but you can name yours whatever you want. Pause here until you've added an ID to an element. Now that we've added an ID to an element in our HTML file, we need to write out what that ID should do in our CSS file. Note that in CSS, you always represent an ID by using a pound side, or as cool kids call it, a hashtag, in front of its name. The ID is then followed by two curly braces. Like with targeting specific CSS elements, you place the code for that ID inside these two braces. Let's take a moment to look at how we can code IDs on our site. For organizational purposes, I'm going to add my ID at the bottom of my CSS file but you can use your own organizational method in your code. Make sure to write your ID name exactly as it appears in your HTML file, using a pound sign to denote that it's an ID. Then, inside my brackets, I'm going to make the text bold. 
To do this, I'll write font weight colon bold. Try customizing your text however you want. Maybe you want to change its color or size instead of its weight. Pause here until you've finished customizing your site using an ID. So for now we're only going to use IDs. But coding classes is very similar. The only difference is that in order to denote that it's a class, you use a period instead of a pound sign. Don't worry though, we'll work more with classes in module 3.3 so you'll have a chance to see how they work. So another way we can customize our site is by using something called pseudo-classes. Pseudo-classes are used to define a special state of an element. For example, they can be used to style an element when a user mouses over it, dial visited and unvisited links differently, and also style an element when a user interacts with it. There are many different pseudo-classes you can use to customize the states of an element. On the screen, you'll see a few examples of different pseudo-classes, like link, visited, hover, and active. Each of these pseudo-classes can be used to customize the state of your link. When using pseudo-classes, be mindful of the order you place them after your element, because order affects the interaction. For best results, I recommend using them in this order, link, visited, hover, and then active. But what do each of these pseudo-classes do? Well, a link customizes the appearance of the link, visited customizes links that have already been clicked, Hover changes the style of an element on a mouse over, and Active customizes an element when a user clicks on it. Let's take a closer look at how we code a pseudoclass. Coding a pseudoclass in CSS extends off what we learned last week about targeting specific elements. Except when using pseudoclasses, you add a colon and then the pseudoclass name onto the end of the element. For example, to customize a link, you would write the element and then colon link. Let's now apply what we've learned to our own websites. Pseudo classes work well with links, so let's start using them for the links on our site. I don't like the bright blue links at the bottom of my screen, so I'm going to use the link pseudo class to customize this link. To do this, I need to target the anchor tag, so I'm going to write A followed by a colon with the word link at the end, and then two curly braces. Then inside my braces, I'm going to change the color of the link to be black by writing colon black but you can change your link to whatever color you want. Check it out, now all my links are black. I've also made the links in the navigation bar at the top black. Hmm, why do you think that happened? Recall from last week how targeting a specific element in CSS targets all instances of that element in our HTML document. Because the navigation bar at top also uses the anchor tags, these links are also modified to be black. Now it's your turn. Try using the Hover Pseudo class to change the color of the background when we hover over one of the navigation options at the top. Pause here and take your time trying it out yourself. I only want to target the background of the items in the navigation bar, so I'm going to write nav U L L I A. Then I want to use the Hover Pseudo class, so I'm going to add colon hover. Finally, I want to change the background of the navigation bar, so I'm going to write background colon hex value. Remember that hex values are colors. I've pre-selected the hex value of FECA62, but you can use whatever color you like. Once you've customized all the links on your page, go ahead and move on to the next section. Great work getting through this module. Now that we've learned how to further customize and organize our sites with CSS, head on to video 3.2 to learn more about how to add spacing between elements.